hey, this might come across as wrong, but the Cardinals really, really concern me. This is Ramview. It's Live from the Ram Cave, I'm Joe Terosian, and this is Ramview, the March 20th, 2024 edition, brought to you by Kissler Law Firm. Injured in an auto accident, need help, got questions, call Kissler Law at 661-206-6990. That's Kissler Law at 661-206-6990. And check out KisslerLawFirm.com. That's one word, KisslerLawFirm.com. Kistler Law, they've been fighting for you since 92. And by Temple City Auto Repair, having some auto issues, get yourself some John and Henry at TempleCityAutoRepair.com. And of course, by Granite Ridge Christian Camp, a place where your life can change. All right. Happy to be here. Glad we're here. It is a warming kind of presence here in first day of spring in California and SoCal, and uh, I don't like it. I like the cold. I want it to get a little chillier, but here we are. Okay. What I meant was <clears throat> the Cardinals are scaring me. Yeah. I'm getting nervous that the Cardinals won't take Marvin Harrison Jr. with that fourth overall pick, right? You're seeing a lot of teams, especially the Vikings right now, doing a lot of maneuvering, gaining a lot of capital to maybe move up. And uh, all the mock drafts up to this point have had Marvin Harrison Jr. of Ohio State. They've had him go into the Cardinals at four. I want him going to the Cardinals at four, right? I, I, I don't want them trading back with the Vikings for three first rounders as it's projected. I want them to think they're getting another Larry Fitzgerald. The Cards already have six picks in the first 100 this year. And this is a team that played hard for head coach Jonathan Gannon last year, even though they finished 4-13. and But let's remember who they beat and who they pushed to the limit. They beat the Cowboys in Phoenix. They went on the road and dominated the state of Pennsylvania. They won in Pittsburgh, Steeler fan Rob in Missouri. They won in Philadelphia. Uh, and they only lost to the Ravens by a touchdown. And they lost to the Seahawks by a point. And if you combine the first two losses at the beginning of last year to the Giants and Taxkins, they lost by a combined seven points. That was with Josh Dobbs. And they didn't quit after Josh Dobbs was traded to Minnesota. And that's the part that scares me. I don't want them having six picks in the first 100. And I definitely don't want them having another first rounder this year if they trade back with uh, the Vikings, so to speak, right? Uh, that, that could make them a really scary team by 2025. They are bought in on Gannon, and, uh, hey, that might not be a Super Bowl team, but, huh, you know, this is kind of scary right now. If, if they end up getting seven picks in the first 100 in this year's draft, two first-rounders this year and maybe Minnesota's next year, that gives them seven picks. You can rebuild a franchise with seven picks. The Rams had 14 picks last year, hit on six of them, six of them, and uh, ended up really a couple of fluke plays away, and they very easily could have had 12 wins instead of 10, and they very easily could have been the team that advanced to the 49ers, to Frisco, uh, in the NFC title game. It, it can happen. And uh, this team played hard for Gannon, and that's the part that's scaring me. One of the things that's that's given me hope, though, is that it's the Cardinals. They're the Bidwell family still owns the Cardinals. This is the franchise that has drafted uh, Steve Pizarkowitz, uh, you know, Tim Rosenbach. Uh, it's the team that drafted Josh Rosen. It's the team that uh, that keeps on uh, keeps on giving. Right. I think they drafted Kelly Stoffer, too, and he wouldn't sign with them. Yeah, they drafted Kyler Murray, but I'm not sold on Kyler Murray. The Bidwell family has been in control forever uh, since the beginning with the Cardinals. And they always find a way to mess it up. So I'm really hoping they will. I'm hoping they don't trade out of that spot. I'm hoping they draft Marvin Harrison. He'll be an all pro receiver, but you know what? He won't be the difference. He won't be the difference. Two first rounders can be in this year's draft, a loaded draft. So hope remains that the Cardinals still won't get it right. And instead they'll grab the candy that is Marvin Harrison when they can easily defer satisfaction 
because there's so many wide receivers in this draft when they could make the trade and uh, grab another great receiver later on in the draft. They're going to go for the candy and take Marvin Harrison. Let's hope they do that. And let's hope they continue to embrace Kyler Murray, who they are financially committed to through the 2028 season, right? Got to take care of the division. 49ers are getting old. 49ers got tac, uh, cap issues. Uh, and the Seahawks, they don't seem to want a quarterback, right? They want to dance with Geno Smith, and I don't get it. I just don't get it. All right. We got that opening rant out of the way. Thanks for clicking on. Hey, guys, you can throw your questions at me in the comment box, and we'll We'll, when we get to the middle of the show, we'll do the we'll do all the questions and answers. I'll try to answer them the best I can, but it's great conversation that we have, and I promise I'll get there. Uh, because the question was raised and I was asked several times and I wasn't sure, uh, there was the breakdown that was posted. Uh, I think it's on Over the Cap. I look at Over the Cap and Spot Track all the time uh, for Colby Parkinson's uh, contract and his cap hits, and uh, he's only a three and a half rock hit this year. For the Rams. And then in 2025 and 2026, he goes up to nine in each of those two seasons. And it's back loaded and it coincides with Tyler Higby coming off the books in 2026. I can't believe he'll be with the Rams in 2026. Um, and uh, if the Rams decide to cut Tyler Higby next year in 2025, he's a six rock dead cap hit. Um, and uh, that's, that's, you know, it's not optimal, but if they wanted to move on, they can move on. Uh, from Tyler Higby. I think we were all surprised when he was extended last year. And then it's just further complicated by the injury he got. Other Ram news, Jonah Williams. Jonah Williams signs with the Vikings. And uh, Kevin O'Connell, the former Ram OC, is there as the HC. He's doing a great job. Uh, and uh, uh, Jonah Williams was a team that the Vikings, um, the, the, the player the Vikings wanted a few years ago, but he failed a physical and came back to the Rams. And uh, in that time, he's appeared in 41 games for the Rams over the last three seasons, starting 22. Uh, he actually uh, passed up uh, Marquise Copeland uh, in the depth chart. If you remember, Marquise Copeland in 2022 was getting the snaps. And then uh, Marquise Copeland was regulated to the relegated to the um, practice squad this last year and wasn't even offered a chance to come back. And neither was Jonah Williams. Uh, you know, the Rams just used him. They developed him. They got 22 starts out of him. He was a solid performer. We know he wasn't great. I think he registered two sacks this last year. Uh, and uh, now uh, he goes to the Vikings. And uh, hello, comp pick for the Rams. So if we look at it, and I think I think this is a fair assessment. If you look at Jordan Fuller with the Ravens, Coleman Shelton with the Bears, and Jonah Williams with the Vikings, that should bring the Rams three comp picks in 2025. Plus, they've already earned a second, third rounder for the Raheem Morris signing in Atlanta. So that's four picks to add into the seven they already had. Uh, and the Rams have 11 picks. They could have 11 picks in next year's draft. And so um, before those uh, three comp picks are added, the Rams already have a first rounder, a second rounder, two third rounders, a fourth, and three sixes. And uh, I'm guessing that... Um, Shelton Fuller and Williams won't they won't pull in anything more than sixth and seventh rounders. So, but that gives the Rams 11 picks. Uh, and uh, again, why you know, uh, what, what, what's the big deal? Well, four of those picks were are going to be likely in the first four, first 100, which means we, we you got to see what the Raheem Morris uh comp pick is going to be this year. It felt it fell at 98. Will it be at 98 or 99 next year or 100 or will it be further back? But Either way, that's flexibility going into this year's draft and something to think about if the Rams want to make a big move also in this year's draft. They have chips to where you can deal away some future draft picks, right? Uh, I'm looking at it at my board right now. Four picks likely in the top 100 uh, and five picks in the first five, four rounds. So the Rams are going to be in good shape and they've got stuff that they can sell and move off of or or put into the middle of the table if they want to go after somebody. And, uh, you know, you, you start looking at the market right now. There's a couple of names out there that you might want to play with and dance with. Uh, but, again, I think I'm more convinced than ever that the Rams are going to do something very creative on draft day. Uh, and so it'll be fun to watch. I don't know if they'll go Sonny Weaver. But, uh, you know, I get the feeling he's going to wake up in the morning and eat his pancakes and say, I feel like I'm moving off 19. At least Les Sneed's going to say that. So something to think about. 
Rams draft order next month is uh, 1952, 83, 99. And then they don't have another pick until the fifth round, 154, 155, sixth round, 189. And then you get into the seventh round uh, or the sixth round, 209, 213, 217. And then in the seventh round, 254. So Rams, uh, you know, will get past the Aaron Donald stuff. It'll be interesting and creative to see what they do. And again, I'm keeping all of Aaron Donald's choices right now in pencil. I'm not putting them in pen until after the draft. Okay. Around the NFL and other places, the Jets have signed former Charger Mike Williams. Uh, and you have to believe now that they've moved off Mike Williams. They've moved off Keenan Allen uh, and, you know, even Gerald Everett uh, that uh, they're going to go high in the draft for a receiver. Uh, but that, but the, but the, the interesting thing here is the Chargers have the fifth overall and if the Cardinals don't deal with Minnesota, and if New England doesn't deal with Minnesota at number three, uh, you got to believe the Bolts will. And because uh, the Minnesota, it's, it's pretty much out there. They want a quarterback, and it looks like it's going to be J.J. McCarthy. And uh, I could see Harbaugh trading back. The Chargers, even though they drafted Quentin Johnson 22nd overall last year, you know he wasn't good. Uh, and uh, out of TCU, 6'2", 205, huge guy, 6'3", 205. And he, do, he just stone hands last year. And so they're going to be looking at another receiver, <coughs> also a tight end, which has projections for them looking at Brock Bowers. But whatever the case is, the moves the Chargers have made under Harbaugh tells us they intend to be physical now. And think about this. All that salary cap hell they were in. First, uh, Roger Goodell and the Shield did them a huge favor with that huge bump in, uh, in, the, in the salary cap. But... Uh, they didn't have to move off Derwin James, Khalil Mack, or Joey Bosa. They got Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa to scale back and restructure. And don't forget, last year they drafted uh, Tuli, uh, Tuya Pelota uh, out of uh, USC, the second round, uh, and uh, he had eight sacks as a rookie. So I think things are going to be a lot, lot more interesting in Boltland than uh, than people thought, and it's going to be sooner rather than later. It's going to be interesting to see. I'm actually kind of interested in what the Chargers do. Maybe we got to get in the guys from the mid here to talk about the Bolts and Jim Harbaugh. Uh, Jameis Winston signs with the Browns as a backup quarterback, which is interesting because earlier this week they signed Tyler Huntley uh, as their backup quarterback, and they still got DTR on the roster. And then they got that other guy. He's that other guy they're paying 63.9 rocks to, fully guaranteed this year, next year, and the year after that, what's his name? Oh yeah, Deshaun Watson, and he's yet to play a full season with the Browns. Pretty interesting. Also, you have to wonder what the Browns were thinking. They extended Jerry Judy, total bust in Denver. They gave him a 58 rock contract extension, three years, and 41 of it they guaranteed. How do you give money to a guy that doesn't run his routes, a guy that won't block, but you give him the money thinking that he's going to suddenly be the guy? Yeah, man, I, I wouldn't have done anything with that guy. I'd have said, make good. That's what I would have said, make good. And, uh, yeah, that's not a good move for the Browns. Not a good move for the Browns at all. Caleb Williams had his pro day today, and it was a hit. Uh, he looked great Every, by all accounts. You can see some of it online, made some incredible throws, uh, and then got interviewed. And, yeah, he did a good job. So that was good for him. He's going to go to the Bears. Everyone knows it. On the flip side, even though uh, we, uh, we, we were not – well, on the flip side, <laughs> you know, what can I say? Marvin Harrison did not go to his pro day and he didn't go to his, uh, he also didn't go to his, uh, to the combine either to work out. So tell us what you're thinking about uh, Marvin Harrison right now. Is that just a little risky? Is that just a, in a draft that's loaded with receivers? Isn't it a little risky? I know he's supposed to be ultra. I know he's supposed to be everything, but we've seen these guys whiff before. Uh, you know, so uh, I thought that was interesting. Anyway, we'll just move on. Uh, heard today that Matt Leiner had a hip replacement surgery. Doesn't he seem young, right? Had hip or double hip replacement, I'm being told. Okay, double hip replacement. Heard the 49ers, uh, Brandon Ayuk is uh, rumored to be going to Pittsburgh. I've even heard Justin Jefferson rumors about him going to Steel Town. Uh, you know, if the Steelers could get their hands on Justin Jefferson, I think so. I would do it. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, I think he's a classic example. He wants his dough, and the 49ers don't have any dough to give, and he's a good receiver. 
Um, but he's not Justin Jefferson. And so, uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm loving it. I want to see all the doubt. I want to see all the struggle in Friscoville. I think it's great. All right. Kind of came through. I, I, I watched the whole series. I don't know if you saw it on Apple TV, the Dynasty uh, documentary on the Patriots. Uh, I read the book. The book is excellent. The book is great. And the book is thorough, right? Uh, and it was interesting. Some of the complaints, some of the players have complained that they focus so much on the negative, right? And I, I think I said that the other day somewhere. I, I shared how I thought it was funny that in episode nine, all of a sudden they're focusing on Trump as if Trump was the reason the soup the, was his fault. The, the Patriots went to three consecutive Super Bowls in 2016, 2017, and 2018, that they won two of those three Super Bowls. And they were talking about them being depressed, that they were talking about the Patriots being depressed, but you're winning Super Bowls. You're going to Super Bowls. Uh, they, you know, the benching of Malcolm Butler, the vilifying of Bill Belichick, right? Uh, but they didn't have time to talk about Teddy Bruschi, right? And that miracle that happened when he had that stroke, right? You know, they didn't mention Corey Dillon or Vince Wilfork. You didn't see them interviewed. Or they didn't even do a wrap up on where some of those players are today, or even like a closing statement from someone like Bledsoe, you know, that, that, you know, he was there, you know, he was kind of part of it. And then he was moved out. A great quarterback was moved out for even a greater quarterback. The show had a neat start, but a lousy finish. Right. Uh, so, uh, so read the book. That's what I would say. Stay in your lane, I stayed in my lane. It's football. And I'm going to stay in my lane right now. I forgot to do my brackets. I'll post them sometime uh, later tonight. Uh, they're still doing the playing rounds for the NCAA. I can say this to Mr. Birds up North. Um, I did pick Virginia to win last night. Yeah, I picked Virginia to win. Yeah, that was pretty bad, right? That was like picking Virginia was like picking the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback to lead them to four touchdowns in a game, right? Uh, that was a bad move on my part. It was a bad call, Ripley. It was a bad call. All right, I'm Joe Chirosi, and I was a sports writer for 21 years, and now I do Ramview thanks to the good people at Kistler Law and Temple City Auto Repair. I also write books, and that's how I support myself. I I do Ramview. I write books. I also have my day job. My day job is I pastor a small church in Burbank called Burbank Faith Nazarene. And uh, you can find us right here on YouTube at Burbank Faith Virtual. And because uh, it is a small church, I need all these side hustles. And uh, I'm blessed that I get to do this. I was a founding member at Mid Valley Sports uh, with Tim and Dwayne. And uh, those guys are still in the room. And uh, I'm doing this. I'm talking uh I'm talking Rams. So if you want to check us out, we don't hide behind a paywall. We don't have a Patreon account. Uh, if you can check out uh, one of our, uh, some of my books on Amazon uh, and, uh, and let me know and I'll make you an ambassador of Quan. Okay. And uh, so thank you to the guys out there that have already done that. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, I wanted to mention you guys uh, today. Okay. I think we got some questions here. Uh, let's see what we got. Manual Korea. How's it going? I pretty, you always ask me how I'm doing manual. If I'm doing the show, I'm pretty good. You should see me the five minutes before I do the show. Uh, then I'm like stressing to turn off all the machines and make sure Stan Kroenke doesn't call me to try to just hang out a little bit. Uh, so, uh, thank you, manual. I'm doing good. Tim Burns, solid at quarterback. Now, Jimmy G, I can get behind for a game here and there. And there are talks of Bennett working out hard as well. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to begrudge the kid. If, if he had an issue, I know everyone's speculating alcohol, and he's got his act together, and he doesn't take a snap this year, and he's on the practice squad. Okay, all right, that, that's cool. Or he's buried in the depth chart. Uh, that's cool. I'm good with that. Uh, Jimmy G is our backup. I don't want to see Jimmy G appear more than in four games. If we see him in more than four games, it means the season's gone south. But I am good with Jimmy G. Uh, USA X-Pac, AZ, Arizona, may have a ton of picks, but we have a game changer in Snead. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And uh, the Kroenke mojo is really good, right? I mean, the Nuggets won a championship. And didn't, didn't one of his uh, soccer teams win a championship in Europe? We got good mojo here. The Bidwells are bad mojo, right? They are bad mojo. So, yeah, USA x -Pat, I agree with you on that. Uh, Tim Burns, how can Hensdrati win when he is the last man standing? So sad. Hey, man, don't reveal the end. I need more people to buy the book. You need to tell everyone to buy the book. Um, Tim uh, Powers, uh, without Donald, Arizona Arizona is not a lock win. So do you agree with me, Mr. Powers, that Arizona is a team you got to keep an eye on right now? 
Uh, I think they're a dangerous team uh, in 2024, and I think they could be contending in 2025 if the Bidwell effect doesn't come in. I know when I looked at the Rams' schedule, I suggested originally, because we don't know when they're playing, uh, originally and unofficially I suggested they could be um, you know, a 12- to 13-win team. I'm willing to scale that back down right now. Still, I know they're going to make moves. I think the Rams are an 11 to 12 win team, 11, uh, possibly 12, uh, because, yeah, there is going to be the Donald effect. I agree. Uh, again, it depends on what we do in the draft. And, you know, there's nothing in terms of interior defensive linemen left on the free agent market. Uh, Manuel Correa, check out Fabian Lovett, Florida State, 6'4", 315, 33 and a half inch arm wingspan. Uh, 83 and eight, one eighth longest arms of this year's DTs. Okay. Hey, project him what fifth round, fifth round, maybe sixth. Uh, let me know where you, where he's projected right now. Tim Burns talking about the tournament. Kentucky is my sleeper. Okay. New Mexico with Jamal Mashburn with a Jamal Mashburn's kid and a guy named house are an 11 seed. And I see uh, an elite eight final four Cinderella. Hey man, I'm rooting for long beach state. I'm rooting for long beach state. I'm always a mid-major guy. I'm always a mid-major guy. Go mid-majors. Uh, Tim Burns, again, the draft is deep at edge, wide receiver, and cornerback. More picks may land us more hits like the six last year. Thoughts? You know what? I, I think you remember, I think I shared a few weeks ago, I was I totally understood what the Rams were doing, loading up 14 draft picks because they had to completely rebuild that roster last year, and they did. They hit on six, and uh, the other eight, you know, we're still ready to find out about. But, uh, but you know, would they do that this year? I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm curious about depth late in the draft, but I, what I really would love to see them do is pick up a fifth pick in the first 100, right? You move back uh, in the first round, stay in the first round, but move back a little bit and then pick up a third rounder. Uh, and then you got five picks in the first 100 because you're right. It is a deep draft. And, uh, you know, we're going to see them, I would think, draft more than two defensive tackles. Uh, they will. The obligatory. They're going to draft a safety. They're going to draft a running back. And I think when you get into the later rounds uh, of uh, of the draft, you know, you're not drafting them in the first 100. They're, they're probably day three picks. But um, there's some running backs out there that can contribute. And even if they're not contributing ball carrying, they're like athletic enough to where they can be really good special team players. Do you think the Rams could use some guys that can play special teams? All right, Tim Burns. Harrison is one of the few who can say, look at the tape. He is the fourth pick. Okay, I hope so. I hope Harrison's the fourth pick. Um, I'd rather see one Harrison than see uh, a Jared Verse and a Romo Dunze, let alone everything else the Cardinals can take uh, in this year's draft. DHP, DHP, bad news, leaving Long Beach, Virginia with uh, Patricia Bacteria pneumoma diagnosis. Good news, bag full of meds and Joe T Sports on the YouTube. Oh, dude, DHP, thank you, man. Whoa, I hope you're feeling better, man. Long Beach VA, I'm sorry, that's Veterans Administration. That's the Veterans Hospital. My brother's been there. Um, man, Bacteria pneumoma. Okay, take care of yourself, man. Take care of yourself, and I'll even throw up a prayer for you. And uh, take care of those meds. And thank you for the nice words about Joe T Sports and YouTube. Uh, Steve Ramirez, I'm more into the women's bracket this year. Yeah, I guess. I'm into Caitlin Clark. I'm into seeing it because she just, by just playing her game, she seems to hack people off. Evan Hutz, you're doing good work. You've got a good pace and interesting insights. Brother, thank you so much, Evan. I do appreciate that. Manuel Correa, I'm down with Chop Robinson at 19. Okay, here's an interesting talk. This was a Burns special uh, that came up, man, almost three weeks ago. Chop Robinson was mid-second round, and then he slowly started climbing in, in the trending area. He got into the high first round, well, low first round, 30th, 30, 29th, 28th. And then all of a sudden, he started popping forward, and I know he reached the Rams at 19 in some mock drafts, and then in others, he got as high as 18. And then lately, I've seen him drop back into the 20s. Uh, I'm not going to argue with anything. Uh, you know, I, I think 19 might be about the place where you start to draft a DT, uh, but I think you can get one by moving back. Uh, but if you want that superior edge, which we're going to talk about again today, uh, you're probably going to have to go at 19. Tim Burns, everyone on here loves football. The book Tangent Dreams by this guy, Joe Terosian, is amazing. High school, Cronky's calling me. 
Cronky, dude, I can't talk. Sorry, man. Uh, I'm doing my thing here. Uh, amazing high school football drama, and he nails it. A great read. And uh, no, I'm not a paid endorser. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Check that out. on. Uh, and make sure you leave the review on Amazon. So thank you, Mr. Burns. Uh, Mr. Burns wishes well, DHP. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Bill, are we getting a kicker in free agency or the draft? There's nothing in free agency right now that says anything about a kicker. I don't, I don't see anything in regards to a kicker right now. Uh, I love everybody's mock drafts, Dano's Tim, Tim Burns or, or whoever, Steve Ramirez, myself, all the mock drafts I've seen done by you guys has uh, the Cardi kid from Stanford going to the Rams, two missed field goals inside the 50 in three years, one missed extra point. <laughs> that, that sounds like peace and safety to me as a Ram fan, get that kid from Stanford. Uh, let's see. Tim Powers. See you Friday, Burnsy. What is that? What, what, what is that? See you Friday, Burnsy. I got to know what that one means. Um, Evan Hans, any chance that, that Cronky, uh, <laughs> that to Cronky, I told you not to call me here. Yeah. The dude calls me. He just wants to rap. He just wants to know. I think sometimes he wants to be in the room with Les and Sean and, uh, and, uh, Les and Sean and, and just feel like part of the team, you know? And uh, I just try to comfort him, man. That's all I can do. I love Stan, though. Don't we all appreciate Stan Kroenke, right? Everyone say amen for Stan Kroenke. Tim Powers, any news on Tredavious Wright? Looked all over today because I brought it up on, on Monday. Looked all over. Did not see anything on Tredavious Wright. Uh, White, Steve Ramirez, what do you think of the NFL possibly using the USFL's kickbox rule? You know what I just want to see is I just want to see – some action on the kickoffs, right? Some action on the kickoffs. And and I, I know I'm not playing. And as soon as a sports writer says it or a sports guy says it, they're going to say, well, you know, maybe you just want to see people get hurt. You know, no one wants to see anybody get hurt. But here's the part that that is so true. Football cannot be risk averse. You, you cannot sanitize football to the point where nobody's going to get hurt. It's the nature of the sport, right? You are going to get hurt. Nobody has a gun to their head to play football, but they play it because there's something in their DNA that keeps allowing them to go back out there. And uh, um, yeah, so I want to see kickoff returns, right? Uh, and, you know, there needs to be some incentive. I don't care if you have to have the kicker go from the 20, start the start the 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 defenders at the 35 or something or at the 40 I don't know I want to see the onside kick brought back and I don't want to see it with rules I don't want to see it where you can't load up on one side uh did you hear the thing they talked about with instead of the onside kick uh do a fourth and 15 that if uh that you could go for it on fourth and fifth, like make it a fourth and 15 a one shot to get 15 yards at your own 25 and if you don't make it the, the opposing team gets the ball where you left it. Do you remember that? You know, something like that. I, I could maybe dance with that, but uh, I, I just get sick when they talk about making football risk averse, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I really, you should have been around me when DeMar Hamlin went down. I about lost it hearing, you know, I'm sorry, stiffs like people on ESPN and Booger, Booger McFarlane, you know, DeMar Hamlin's on the field and no one knows what's going on. And he immediately trends to football's a violent sport. You know, is the Pope Catholic? Well, maybe not anymore, but there was a time the Pope was Catholic. And, and uh, you know, it's like football's dangerous. It is. And and that's why it, you, you anytime you try to sanitize it, it's not going to work. And when you try to make things safer sometimes in football, try to ease up a little bit, you do often get injuries. So I'm off my uh, off my um, soapbox. Steve Ramirez uh, I like the fourth and 50. So you have heard it. I knew I heard it somewhere. Bill, I want to see roughing the passer play being absolutely. It has to be reviewed, has to be reviewed. I'd also like a change in the pass interference penalty that I think there should be the egregious, you know, or the flagrant pass interference. And then that's a spot foul, but every other one should be the, the college rule 15 yards and a first down too many games are getting decided because, and it's not reviewable. Heaven's Gate and Hell's Flames. It's got to be reviewable because you're deciding games on that. Uh, Chiefs uh, Packers last year, right? Receiver gets mugged and it's like, huh? What? We didn't see anything. Okay. Uh, Tim Burns, if coal miners know the risks, do the play, the, 
so do the players in their job. Yeah, of course they do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Steve Ramirez, who is an auto racing guy, football is like auto racing. You can only make it so safe. Absolutely. I mean, I, I grew up watching Tom Sneva blow up, right? Okay, guys, I promise we'll get to more questions if you got them. So shoot them up there. Uh, let's get to the other side of this. Uh, Robert Rochelle. I love just mentioning that because there was such high hopes for Robert Rochelle in 2021. Uh, length and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he re-signed with the Green Bay Packers. Uh, Brett Rippon, I don't think we any of us had any real hope for Brett Rippon, but he's got a gig. Maybe he's a camp arm for the Bears in Chicago. And Sebastian Joseph Day, he signed with the Tennessee Titans. And uh, so good for him. And I think today's his birthday. We'll check. Okay, this came up about Edge, okay? And uh, this is what we were going to touch on. The, there's free agents out there. And I've always been anti Jadavion Clowney. I didn't want to pay the money that he would have asked for, but at this point in his career, you know, he's he's holds the edge really well. Um, and it always felt like a weak reach for the Rams to go to him because he's just bounced around everywhere. He had a really good year last year. If you could bring him in at a reasonable rate, let him line up opposite Byron Young, still draft a, another quality edge rusher. Uh then okay, I'll dance with that. I, I can dance with that. Um, so yeah, and he's still out there. So it kind of lets you know he wasn't like the first phone call a lot of teams made. And then I'm gonna throw this one out at you because he had six, six or seven sacks last year. Okay. Steeler fan Rob in Missouri is gonna get all excited. Uh, but what do you guys think about maybe? And I'm thinking in the Samson Ebo Cam way, I'm thinking in the Ogbo Okoronko way, uh, somebody like Bud Dupree. I checked out what he's worth. Uh, Bud Dupree is uh, basically like, you know, one year, three rocks, 3.7 rocks. Uh, you know, just let him come in and be a guy that, you know, a little of experience. I don't know what kind of character he is, but bring him in and he could just be added depth uh, in the edge department. You know, how often, how many times have we said it here on the show? You guys were talking about it. A lot of people were talking about it. How many times have we looked at that Ram game against the Lions and thought we just had another edge rusher? We just had one more. Just one more. How different could the season have been? So I don't know. I'll throw Bud Dupree out there. Some interesting names that I think the Rams should wait on. I don't think you have to do anything right now. I mean, I would go post draft. And if they're still there, then I, you know, their price is going to go down. Uh, and one of them is cornerback Stephon Gilmore. Now, it says he's worth 10 rocks, but he's 33. He had a monster year with Indy in 2022, and he had a solid season in Dallas last year. Not great, but solid. But he could still play. Uh, and uh, I don't think he signed anywhere. I, I, I looked around. Please correct me if I did it wrong, but I looked around, and I didn't see him signing anywhere. I think his age is working against him. I wouldn't be bad about, against bringing Gilmore in. He he plays matchup. He can he – can, he can really help this team. Uh, you know, he picked off a pass against us in Super Bowl 53. He owes us. Uh, so uh, I would like to see the Rams take a look at him, but not right now. There's no rush. Let the market play out. And he's still there after the draft. I don't know. I, I think about it. Here's another name I'll throw at you. He's, he's been on, on more teams than Norm Sneed. Um, is Kyle Van Oy. His market's three rocks a year. Uh, he's played off ball. He's played edge. He had another, he had a really good year in Baltimore last year too. He would be someone that I'd keep my eye on. I, I'm not hard pressed right now, but wouldn't it be nice at that price to have him uh, there next to Ernest Jones or spelling Ernest Jones or just being in there with him? That, that be, wouldn't be a bad deal at that price. 1.3, maybe less after the draft. Who knows? Uh, it'll be interesting to see. No one has uh, reached out to really pick him up yet. All right. And as far as defensive tackles uh, in the free agents market, they're going to have to come through the draft. They're just going to have, I don't see anything. I mean, even the stiffs like Hankins and Sebastian Joseph Day, sorry, I know he was a Ram, but we know what they are. You know, they're all signing right now. That, that, that's the bottom of the barrel. There's, there's nothing there. All right. 
you know, nothing there. You know, I, I, if I'm the Rams. I'd, I'd go back and see if Alvin Wright has anything left. Maybe Cody Jones or Mike or, or something. You know, uh, check those things out. Nothing new on Ram interviews. Uh, Rams are pretty tight on those Ram interviews, pre-draft interviews. I've shared with you Washington's Braylon Trice. Uh, Bo Nix, Audric Estime out of Notre Dame. And they even, everyone made a big deal out of it. They interviewed Rome Odunze at the um, combine. Daniel Jeremiah put out his third mock draft. Uh, and uh, in his first mock draft for the Rams, he had them taking uh, Leatu, Leatu Latu out of UCLA. His second had them taking uh, Jackson Powers Johnson. Uh, and then uh, this one, we'll see. Uh, of course, the first pick, he has the Bears taking Caleb Williams. I think that was solidified even more. Second pick, he has the Tax Skins taking Drake May. And uh, for the last month and a half, it's been Jaden Daniels number two. Uh, and uh, this time here, Daniel Jeremiah has Drake May going to the Tax Skins at number two. He has the Patriots at number three taking Jaden Daniels. Uh, and But you know, if Minnesota can get to the third spot, there's talk of Minnesota getting to the third spot. Uh, and then if the Patriots would be willing to trade out of there, that's something they're, they're, they should be thinking about, you know, they should be thinking about trading out because they've got a lot of holes on that Patriot roster. Uh, and I'm not enamored with Jaden Daniels. I'm just not, you know, uh, you know, people say, well, look at the receivers he had. And then others will say, well, look at the receivers Joe Burrow had. Well, I'll just say this is Joe Burrow won a natty, right? You know, Jaden Daniels, you know, he lost the big games this year. I'm just not, again, I think I got ASU hangover with Jaden Daniels. Uh, at the number four spot, the Vikings, uh, Jeremiah projects a trade. They're going for J.J. McCarthy. And that's a weird one, how McCarthy's climbed the board. Uh, at the number five spot, Jeremiah projects a trade where the Jets move up with the Chargers and the Jets take Marvin Harrison Jr. And uh, I, I'm curious that, if Daniel Jeremiah was calculating that they had just signed Mike Williams, the wide receiver, the former charger uh, giants taking number six, uh, LSU wide receiver, Malik neighbors uh, Titans at number seven. Every mock draft I see is Joe alt uh, going to them. The tackle at number eight, almost everyone I'm seeing right now has Dallas Turner, the Alabama guy going to the Falcons at number nine, seen a lot of these right here. Romo Dunze going to the bears at number nine. Uh, the Bolts, the, the Chargers at number 10, thanks to their trade, uh, Talisi Fuaga, the Oregon State right tackle. Jeremiah said he would project him as a right guard his first year. It'll be interesting to see, again, how that part uh, plays out with uh, Fuaga and what they would do on that offensive line. But he's a beast. He's a brawler. He fits the Harbaugh the Harbaugh traits there. Cardinals at number 11, take Jared Verse uh, out of Florida State, the, the edge guy. Broncos at number 12, take Brock Bowers at, uh, at tight end, and they still don't have a quarterback. And here was the shocker. First time in over a month, I've seen Michael Penix in the first round. Jeremiah predicts uh, projects the, the Raiders taking Michael Penix uh, 13th overall. Good for Michael Penix, right? Uh, that, that's an interesting one. Olum Fashino, the Penn State tackle, going to the Saints at 14. Uh, Quinion Mitchell going to the Colts at number 15. Uh, Troy Fontenot, the Washington tackle, going to the Seahawks at 16. You know, I guess they're giving up on Cross and Lucas, uh, and they're going to Fontenot. I, I, again, I don't understand why the Seahawks are not making a move to go get a quarterback, but they're not doing it. And that's great for the Rams. Jaguars, number 17. Uh, they're taking Terry on Arnold, the Alabama cornerback. Bengals at number 18 go to Alabama as well. Take J.C. Latham. And then at number 19, um, Daniel Jeremiah projects the Rams, taking 6'5", 259-pound edge rusher out of UCLA, Leatu Latu, uh, saying that he's the most natural pass rusher in the draft. Okay. Uh, Steelers taking Tyler Guyton, tackle Oklahoma at 20. Graham Barton, uh, the guard from Duke, going to the Dolphins at 21. Nate Wiggins, Clemson corner, going to the Eagles at 22. Brian Thomas Jr., the other receiver from LSU, going to the Cardinals at 23. So, so again, Cardinals trade back. They pick up Jared Verse, and they pick up Brian Thomas. That, that would be a smart thing to do for the Cardinals, so we don't want them to do it. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson at 24, going to the Cowboys. Amarius Mims, tackle Georgia, 6'8", 340. 
going to the Packers at number 25. That's kind of high. Usually the Packers get their, their offensive linemen in the mid rounds, don't they? That seems interesting. Uh, number 26, Darius Robinson, edge, Missouri, 6'5", 285, going to the Bucks at 26. Cards, 27. Uh, Byron Murphy, uh, defensive tackle. That's their third first rounder if they make this deal. Uh, defensive tackle, Texas. Uh, Bills, 28. Jerzon, Johnny Newton, Illinois. Lions, 29. Kool-Aid McKinstry. Ravens, number 30. Cooper DeGene. And for my friends out there, Chop Robinson, Penn State going to the 49ers at 31. I will say this about Chop Robinson, workout beast, looks impressive. He doesn't have a lot of stats when it comes to sacks. I'm just throwing that out there. And then at number 32, because the team that's had the best offseason, thanks to Roger Goodell of the Shield for raising <laughs> raising the um, the salary cap, the Chiefs were able to keep Legereus Sneed. They were able to sign uh, Char uh, Chris Jones. And now that opens up the door at number 32, can you imagine the Chiefs signing Adonai Mitchell, Texas, 6'2", 205, runs a 4'3", 40? He's the other guy. Not Xavier, what, was it Xavier Worthy, but uh, Adonai Mitchell. That would be devastating for the AFC to see the Chiefs get him. We've looked at 19 mock drafts so far outside of the house. Not inside the house, which you guys sent me, but outside from CBS Sports, Sports Illustrated, PFF, uh, Bucky Brooks, Daniel Jeremiah, all those different places. 19 mock drafts we've looked at. Six of them have Latu going to the Rams at 19. Feels more likely now than it did before Donald uh, pulled his thing, did his thing, but something to think about. Um, uh, again, I still think the Rams are going to trade out or trade, do something crazy at 19. Uh, I did see uh, another mock draft that did the second and third rounds. This was CBS. And uh, they pre and it was a lazy mock draft. You got to be careful. Sometimes these lazy mock drafts, I don't know. I just don't buy them. Sometimes it seems like they're just just going with what the recommendations are uh, from the site. Uh, this one projected Michael Hall, defensive tackle, Ohio State. Uh, he's not projected that high, going to the Rams at fifty-two. And then Kita Kimta uh, Oladapo, the safety from Oregon State. You know, most places at eighty-three. Uh, one, I don't want the Rams to draft a safety in the first 100. And second, uh, Oladapo has been projected seventh round in a lot of places. I thought that was kind of interesting. And then at 99, uh, Braylon Allen running back, 6'2", 245. Uh, he was trending fourth, mid-fourth round. Uh, and then they have the Rams grabbing him at number nine, 99. I guess so. I guess so. But if I'm going to take a guy at 99. He's playing. Not Ronnie Rivers. Braylon Allen's playing if I'm taking a guy at 99 or maybe at 6'2", 245, you make him a fullback and change your offense a little bit. All right. Just keep it moving along here. OK, I think yeah, we blew through. I'm still going to go back and uh, look at some of the um, look at some of the teams we're playing. I'm right now stuck on the bills. I just haven't had time to get there because I still want to try to talk to you guys and keep the show under 50 minutes. So it was a but we're not done My yet. Man. Okay, on this date, March 20th, 1980. And March 20th, 1980, I think, was the day that Roberto Duran actually beat uh, Sugar Ray Leonard in the brawl in Montreal. I remember I was at the mall. I went to the movies that night. But really quietly that day, Don Klosterman, who was still the acting GM for the Rams, it wasn't until 81 and 82 that he lost all of his power. But in 1980, on this day, March 20th, John Capaletti was traded by the Rams to the Chargers. Now, Capaletti didn't play the 1979 season, but his rights were traded to the Chargers. Now, the Chargers gave the Rams a second-round pick in 1982 for John Capaletti, who didn't play in 1979. And his body was already starting to betray him. He got banged up in 78. He didn't play in 79. And somehow... Klosterman got Gene Klein of the Chargers to give him a second round pick that turned out to be 49th overall in 1982 uh, for John Capaletti. I mean, that's an amazing, amazing deal, right? So, so Klosterman makes the deal. The Rams get that second round pick. It's in their back pocket. And then in 81 and 82, Klosterman loses all power, right? Because you got the John Shaw takeover and the and the whole business with Georgia and everything's kind of starting to go south a little bit for the Rams, right? So they take that pick, the Rams do, in 81, and they deal it to the Redskins. And the Redskins 
end up the, the Rams deal several picks to the Redskins in 81. They deal uh, 60 in, in the 1981 draft. They deal the number 69 pick, the 117 pick, the 132 pick. One of those picks turns out to be Russ Grimm. And then they add the number 49 pick in 1982, which is the pick they got for John Capaletti to the Redskins to get the first, get a first round pick in 1982. So they dealt that second round pick along with a bunch of others for a first round pick in 1982. And who did they take? They took Barry Redden at number 14. Barry Redden. I like Barry Redden, right? But Barry Redden was no Wendell Tyler. <laughs> Wasn't no Eric Dickerson. Wasn't Lawrence McCutcheon. He had a nice little run with the Rams. Uh, Became a little bit of a blocking back for uh, Eric Dickerson. Got traded to the Chargers. And there's a whole other story there. But I'm, I was thinking about that number 49 overall pick that we got for Capaletti um, in 82 and uh, to see what would have been available for the Rams uh, if they had still had that number 49 overall pick in 1982. And you know who was drafted at number 52 in that 1982 draft? Dude named Mark Duper, wide receiver. That would have been a nice gift to – to um, Vince Ferragamo and eventually, uh, you know, Jim Everett. And also at number 70 in that draft, and I know it's a reach. I know it's a reach, but number 70 in that draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers, Steeler fan, Rob, you say you're a Steeler fan. You must know this guy, the Steelers with the 70th pick overall in that draft, a guy the Rams could have taken. They took Mike Merriweather at 70 and Merriweather had a really nice decade with the Steelers. Really nice decade. He was a tough, tough, linebacker. All right, real quick here in 1997, on this day, David Edwards was born. He turns 27 today. He was re-signed and extended in Buffalo, so good for Dave Edwards. Starting left guard in Super Bowl 56 team. And then born on this day in 1960, uh, he turns 64 today. Uh, Mike Wiltshire, outside linebacker for the Rams, was a solid for the Rams all through the 80s, a really nice career. I remember because he was out of North Carolina and the Rams drafted him in 83. Some people were trying to speculate that he was almost just like Lawrence Taylor. Now, Mike Wilcher wasn't Lawrence Taylor, but Mike Wilcher was a solid, solid linebacker for the Rams. Often just gets forgotten like a lot of guys do. Wanted to get that stuff out there for you guys to hear. All right, let's see here. Um, okay, let's do some more questions before we wrap up the show. Bill, with the Rams defense, I don't want the fourth and 15 rule. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, maybe. Can, you know who I was just thinking about, Bill? I was just thinking about Chris Shula, right? Uh, Chris Shula is the new DC. Wade Phillips comes over and McVay says, hey, come on over, be, be kind of like my, my mentor a little bit here those first few years. And he goes, by the way, you get to coach Aaron Donald. Hey, Brandon Staley, why don't you leave Vic Fangio? And guess what? You get Aaron Donald. Hey, Raheem, I know you've never been a DC before, but guess what? You get Aaron Donald. Uh, Chris Shula Hey, we're going to promote you, man. You've been with the organization for about six years. We've seen you grow. We've seen you mature, but no Aaron Donald. So uh, uh, I just don't want to see that passive. Let's uh, let's not trust our safeties or, or our corners. See the Rams eight yards off the ball. They played a lot more press coverage this year, and I thought it made a huge difference. Uh, so that's how I feel about the defense there, Bill. Uh, Steeler fan Robin, Missouri. We got Trey White. Uh, Mr. Powers. Oh, you did. You signed Trey White. Well, you needed him. I hope he stays healthy for you. I hope he stays healthy. Manuel Korea, Hassan Reddick. Um, yeah, you asked me about that. He is still on the market if you want to trade for him. Would, how much would you trade for Hassan Reddick? Is he worth a second round pick? Is he worth a third round pick? Uh, I remember bringing it up when the show first started late 2021. Uh, I think he had just played out his option with uh, the Cardinals. And uh, I was thinking, you know, maybe the Rams should give Hassan Reddick a call. And, of course, they didn't. Um, uh, Manuel Correa should have kept Fields. SC quarterbacks disappear uh, in the NFL. Lately they have, haven't they? You know, it's so funny. You take Matt Leiner, you take uh, Matt Barkley, uh, maybe not Carson Palmer, but uh, Sam Darnold. And you know who had a better career than all three of those guys? <laughs> who had a better – more consistent career, Matt Castle, who couldn't even start in front of uh, in front of uh, Liner at SC, played some tight end even. Uh, let's see, uh, Rob, uh, Steeler fan, Rob from Missouri. Bud wants to reunite with us. Is that true? Is that true? Do you want him back, or does he want to come back? 
Uh, Steve Ramirez, I can see the Rams trade down a few spots and still get Latu or Robinson or one of those CBs and get the edge in the third round. I can see it too. I can see it too. You know who would have a, a field day would just be Gloria and Excelsius Deo would be uh, uh, manual here because he's always bringing up Marshall ne uh, Marshawn Neeland, right? And you could probably get him in the third round. And don't anyone forget my guy, Tavondre Sweat. I'm all in the Tavondre Sweat. Okay. Uh, no, DHP, I did not look at the LT for BYU. I'm sorry. Uh, Kingsley, right? I did not see. I know he's a beast and he's a giant. Uh, I will follow up on that, but someone had him projected in the first round in our last show. Uh, Tim Burns, who was the worst starting quarterback for the Rams after Bulger left and before Goff arrived? Well, you know, you got Case Keenum, you had Sean Hill. Remember Austin Davis? Um, I, I didn't hate Austin Davis. You had Kellen Clemens. Uh, and then there was that whole, man, there was a whole weird stretch in there. Remember they brought Gus Farratt back. They brought in, they brought Trent Green back. Uh, there was, was it, was it Keith Knoll? There was, uh, you know, you know, does anyone remember the, uh, you know, the, the, those, those days where, uh, they're just starting the Weber state guy, Jamie, I forgot his name right now. It's slipping my mind. Uh, but yeah, there've been some bad dudes in there, bad dudes, but that was the case of the Rams were really good at collecting backup quarterbacks in those days. They just couldn't get a starter. Now they got a great starter. And they just can't collect a backup quarterback. Right. So, uh, I remember those days, uh, Manuel Korea, Colin Bryant and Lawrence McCutcheon. Yeah. You know, I was talking about Capaletti. If you remember in 78, that's when everything broke down for McCutcheon. McCutcheon ran for about 420 yards. He had run for 1,000 yards four times in five years, and uh, he ran for 911 and 75, but he was injured late in the year, and he didn't start the last game. I think that was the game against Pittsburgh, and so he finished with less than 1,000 yards, and then he ran for 202 yards against the Cardinals in round one. Uh, Mr. Powers was, I think, at that game. I think he was at that game. And uh, and so uh, – uh, he comes in in 77. He's still the running back, but he gets hurt, right? Uh, Wendell Tyler doesn't take over. The Rams, for a good chunk of 78, Elvis Peacock got hurt. Uh, they had drafted him in the first round in 78. So the Rams, I remember, in 78, they were playing a lot of Capaletti and a lot of Cullen Bryant down the stretch. And if you remember, they even signed Anthony Davis down the stretch. And everyone was just jazzed that Anthony Davis was finally playing for the Rams. And he got a couple of snaps, and then his career was over. But I thought that was uh, that was interesting. Good. I love talking about that manual career. Tim Burns, Frontier drives a scary boat ride. Yeah, uh, yeah, Georgia. That was that was difficult, man. You know, I've known some people, and I'm not going to say their names, that said she was very nice to them, and I'm I'm not going to not going to take that away from them. But man, you know, Georgia Frontier here. They, we we feel about Georgia Frontier as probably as some St. Louis fans feel about Stan Kroenke, right? And uh, and so, yeah, Jamie Martin, Mr. Burns, that was it. Jamie Barton, that was that was perfect. Uh, Tim Burns, Steve Ramirez nailed it uh, in terms of, uh, I think you're talking about moving down in the draft and taking those things. Yeah, well, Steve Ramirez is a, a diehard Ram fan, at least going back to the 69 season. He still has bruises from uh, Alan Page sacking Gabriel in the end zone on that safety in the playoff game in the snow. Uh, but I don't want to rub anything in. Now, I didn't see that game. My first nightmare was 73. Uh, so there we go. Uh, Bill, Kurt Warner, the running, going to Rams. I was so excited. Oh, Kurt Warner, the running back. Yeah. You know, everyone forgets him, right? Everyone forgets how good. You know, the, the great running back in the 83 draft was uh, LS, was uh, Eric Dickerson. The next one was Penn State's Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner was great at Penn State because he could catch the ball, too. And uh, he had a great, I think, 83. He hurt his knee in 84. And he was a little less spectacular at 85, 86, 87. But he ended up, you know, he was a very productive, great running back. Uh, and then uh, when the Rams went cheap, remember after 89, they didn't re-sign Greg Bell. They moved off of Pete Hollihan. You knew something was fishy there now when you look back. And they brought in um, Robinson, brought in Kurt Warner, and he didn't even last the season. He didn't even last the season. Uh, what would have been nice is to see that project that was Marcus Dupree, who was who played with the Rams for two years before Robinson left. I think it was 91 and 92. I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. No, it was uh, 90 and 91. And, uh, you know, Marcus Dupree was kind of fun to watch. More of a power back, not the breakaway guy anymore. Um, 
Mr. Steeler fan Rob in Missouri, uh, joking we didn't get white. Yeah, that guy's more fragile right now than Tony Romo. So uh, you better be careful in terms of white. Okay, guys, I think we got it in. We're at the 54-minute mark. I'm in the red zone here. Um, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for clicking on. Uh, and when I can let people know when I know I'm going to be exactly on, I will put out a post like I did this morning. Thank you for your support. Uh, Mr. Burns, thank you for buying my book. Uh, everyone else out there, uh, I know I got a friend out there that bought a book and your name is slipping me right now. I do appreciate you for buying Faith Views for Storm Riders. Um, and uh, that just keeps the keeps the train moving. Thank you to Kister Law uh, and helping us with our auto injury. Believe it or not, when my wife got hit by a car, it was amazing that my sponsor was an auto lawyer. So we are blessed. We're thankful for you guys uh, watching us. Bill, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, DHP, you take care of yourself, man. Uh, do not get sick, okay, or get the, over that sickness. And uh, thank you for allowing us to be part of your day. Okay, guys, God bless. Take care. We will talk to you on Friday.